In this screencast, I will try to simulate fabric stitching in Inkscape version 0.46. Let's begin. Okay, I got the idea for this uh, tutorial from a website called pshero.com. Uh, it's a Photoshop website, and I found this, and I thought it was kind of a neat, uh, a neat little project here. Uh, again, this was done in Photoshop, but it can easily be uh, adapted to Inkscape. Uh, what I want to try to do is uh, simulate these uh, this stitching effect around the text. So let's get to it. Okay, first things first, let's go to File. We're going to go to our Document Properties, and I'm going to set my document up for 500 wide, 250 high. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pull in my first material. Uh, this is kind of a, a denim or a, a canvas material that I got from a texture site. I'll give you a link uh, to the or the to the particular uh, texture site where I found this if you want to use it. Otherwise, uh, just throw in your own texture. Okay, I'm going to put that on our page. And I'm going to draw a new rectangle, and I'm going to make this 500 wide, 250 high, and we'll snap that on the on our page. Whoops. Okay, let me zoom in here, and it looks like I already have my stroke set. I'm going to set my stroke to a 2 and I want to make sure third one down uh, I'm using the uh, dashed stroke okay now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to my node tool we'll go to path dynamic offset and I'm gonna pull that in okay I think that looks pretty good and I'm gonna remove the stroke or I'm sorry the uh, fill on the inside okay now hopefully that kinda of looks like uh, like stitching around here so that's the effect that I'm trying to go for so let's zoom out and let's bring in our next uh, fabric. This is just a black fabric. And we're going to put it to the side for now. Now what I'm going to do is draw a brand new rectangle. We'll make this one red. And I'll remove the stroke. And I'm going to make this 400 wide by 140 high. Matter of fact, let's make this yellow. Okay, now what we need to do is I need to simulate like a, a zigzag effect across here. Uh, basically what I'm trying to do is uh, if your wife has a sewing kit at home, or maybe you do if you're Richard, I don't know. Um, I know Richard loves to sew and knit. He's uh, totally into that. But if you have uh, pinking shears uh, in your sewing kit, then you know that when you cut fabric with it, it kind of gives it that zigzag shape. And uh, that's what I'm trying to go for. Uh, I wasn't sure how to do that in Inkscape. Um, I know that there are several ways, but you know I always try to find the fastest way. Um, so I had to have uh, Richard help me on this one. And uh, Richard thought if I set up a grid and just kind of drew around it, you know, snapping to my grid, it might be the fastest way to do it. And uh, I'd have to agree because I think that is a, a, a pretty slick way. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our file pull down, document properties. We're going to go to our grids. We're going to use a rectangular grid and we're going to select new. Uh, I'm going to leave it as a one right now. And I'm going to zoom in on my object here. I'm going to make sure that I move it around so that it snaps to my squares. Okay, now, 
you can see uh, one is a is a little too fine so I'm gonna go back to my document properties and I'm gonna set this let's try a five five might be too fine too and I think it is we'll try a ten okay I think that's pretty good now what I've done again I've I've moved this around so that it snaps perfectly into my grid squares so you can see that I have perfect squares across here I'm not splitting a square or anything like that and because I've done that I can go ahead and and make my zigzag effect correctly so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna zoom on this thing here and I'm gonna grab my bezier tool and I'm gonna select my first point and I'm gonna go all the way around this thing just like you see here again there might be better ways there might be faster ways uh, but it wasn't obviously clear to me you know which which way to go I don't think it really matters just as long as you kinda capture your uh, design intent I think that's all that matters in the end if you make a mistake uh, all you need to do is hit your uh, backspace button and it will uh, it'll remove your last stroke that you made or I'm sorry the last uh, path that you drew okay this is the boring part of the tutorial in the horn here and we'll connect it and then we'll hit enter okay let's zoom out and see what we just drew I'm gonna go ahead and go to view and uh, turn my grids off I don't need them anymore okay and that is the effect that I was trying to do okay now that it's a closed path I can go ahead and shade it and give it a different color okay works just like that but before I do that or before we carry on I'm going to draw a new rectangle put it behind here and I'll put it behind everything okay now what I'm gonna do is I need to cut this away from my shape so the first thing that I'm gonna do is select my green color let's actually make that green okay so my green color I'll select my big red rectangle we will go to path and we'll do a difference okay now it appears like nothing had happened well I did make a cut through it okay you can see it here so let me undo that this time I'll push it to the front so you can see okay now in order to get the shape into um, uh, this uh, yellow piece here what I'm gonna do is select my yellow object select my red and we'll do a difference on that okay now I got it okay now you're asking yourself heathen X why did you just go the long way there you just drew this shape and you could have just taken the shape that you drew and used the fill well that's what I would have done but I wanted to show you that when you make when you draw certain shapes it is very easy to just to to cut them away from other things so whether you like that tip or not maybe you know you'll use it for other things that you want to do so I had a reason for doing it that way okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this well let me zoom in here I'm gonna take this texture that I brought in and I'm gonna go to object and we are going to do objects to pattern okay 
Now I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to make this shape that I've just drawn and I'm going to change its fill to a pattern fill and I'm going to use this new uh, this new pattern. Now it's important to note with Inkscape you do get artifacting sometimes. You can see it. I have a white line here and a white line here that doesn't actually exist. Um, it's just because Inkscape gets a little overloaded at times. Uh, the rendering uh, doesn't work quite so well. It will go away, so don't worry about it. All right. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate it. And we're going to change that duplicated copy black. And what we're going to do is make a drop shadow. I'll give this about a 2% blur. And we'll try maybe a 70% for the opacity. And I'm going to push that down like so. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is send this all the way to the back. Or actually just lower it a step. So I've got a little bit of a drop shadow on there. Now the next thing I want to do is my texture that I have, I didn't quite get the texture that I wanted. I wanted something a little darker. Well you can take your texture, open it up in GIMP, do whatever you want to in there. But you can also kind of work around it in Inkscape. And what you can do is you can uh, right click on this and duplicate it make this black and then just change its uh, whoops you can just change its transparency we'll try 50 here okay I think that looks pretty good and you can see that it gives me a darker texture that's kinda what I want so I'm gonna go ahead select this whole thing and group it together Okay, and we'll move this aside for now. That's my telephone ringing. Okay, now the next thing that I'm going to do is I, I'm going to write some out or going to write out some text. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, and we're going to pick a nice font. And I wanted something kind of rounded. Um, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this font. I think it's called Jungle. Um, I'll show you what it looks like here. You can kind of see that everything is, is rounded. And uh, I was thinking maybe that might work better for stitching. Let me get this kind of a little bit bigger here. I think that's what I want. OK. All right. Let's move this up here, and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is zoom in on this corner. I'm going to select my green texture. I'm going to go to Object, Pattern, Objects to Pattern. And I'm going to make this green texture a pattern. I'm going to select my first uh, text. I'm going to pick a pattern, and that's not the pattern that I want, so I just hit the drop down and pick the pattern. That's green. Okay, and again, you have some artifacting through here. Uh, that does happen, but I'm not too concerned with it right now. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take this uh, text here, and I'm going to give it a stroke. We'll remove the fill, and I think one's fine. Now I'm going to zoom in on this, and what I'm going to do is draw a guide. So I'm just going to drag that down from our ruler. I'll put it about right here, and we're going to draw a V. We do that with our Bezier tool, and I'm holding the control key down. And When I do that, you can see down here in your status bar, where you are for degrees. 
Okay, so if you're looking for a 45 degree angle or whatever, you can go ahead and uh, just kind of move that around as long as you have your control key down and uh, get that. Okay, so I'm going to go 70 degrees and then back up 70. I'll hit enter here. And I'm going to push this over here and I'm going to get rid of our guide. We do that by holding the control key down and then just left clicking on that. Or you can come up here and just turn the guide off. Uh, turn off its visibility without deleting it. Okay, so we're going to select our V-shaped object, go to our fill and stroke, and we'll give it rounded caps. Make this just a little bit smaller. Okay, and I'm going to change its stroke size to a 0.75. Now we'll put that on top of here and see if, what that looks like. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so let's get on to our next part. Now what I'm going to do is right click on this uh, and we are going to do a copy. That'll send this shape into our clipboard. I'm going to take this text, go to object, whoops, go to path, object to path. We're going to convert that to a path. So when we double click it, we'll see our nodes exposed and I'm going to zoom out. And we'll zoom out one more time. Okay. Now, in order to get this V-shaped uh, around this uh, text here, I thought what might be the best is to use a live path effect. So we do that by going to object, or I'm sorry, going to path. Wait a minute. Where are you? Here we go. Path. I'm sorry. It's path. We want to go to path, path effects. And what we're going to do is select our path. And we're going to do pattern along path. And we're going to do an apply. Okay. Now what it's asking me to do is uh, what kind of path do you want or what kind of pattern do you want. We want to do a repeated pattern and I need to paste in the shape that I drew so it knows what to pattern. So I'm gonna paste that in and you see now that I have my stitching effect. Okay, now there's one thing I wanna I want you guys to note here is that the stitching is a little close together and what you'll need to do is adjust the kerning on your text first before uh, you you carry on here. Now if you forget it's okay you can double click on this and all you need to do is select the red path and then you can arrow key over. But that's not as elegant as just you know adjusting the kerning of the text before you make it a path. Okay, So you may want to do whatever you want to your text there. But I'm going to leave that alone for now and I'm going to delete this V. Okay, now if I want to change the stitching shape, what I can do is double click on this. Well, actually, let me do this. Let's go to Path, Path Effects. Let's select our path. And this time, I'll use this Edit on Canvas tool. And what you'll see here is my V shape that I drew. Okay. So I'm not going to do it because it's a little CPU intensive, but if I move these nodes, it will automatically adjust the nodes, uh, I'm sorry, adjust the path around this text here. That's what's great about live path effects. They work really well. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is take both of these and we'll align them on top of each other. And I'm going to change my stitching from black to white. And I'm actually going to move the stitching back up here because I want to I want to make sure that the stitching is on the black the black pattern, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and take that and group it. And I'm going to select this shape here. 
we'll go to our line and distribute and I'm going to change this to last selected and then I'll center it up okay now hopefully what I've simulated here is I wanted to show like if you had like a, a, a fabric or a patch or something to, you can stitch around it here okay so let's zoom out on that and let's take this here and we'll group this together now what I'm gonna do is put that on my page okay I think we're getting close zoom in on this I'm gonna take this now and we'll just rotate it just slightly okay and that is our screencast okay so basically what we have is I have a uh, a background patch that I've uh, stitched uh, I've got a piece of fabric uh, that I've laid on top and I've stitched in the letters or the word stitches now I'm not sure what you would use this particular project for uh, maybe if you've got some scrapbooking projects or whatever uh, maybe artwork like this might come in handy or maybe you're working on a website I'm not sure but you guys will come up with all kinds of ideas for for this stuff so uh, it doesn't matter so anyways uh, that's our screencast and thank you for watching I'm heathen X